Thousands of students across England, Wales and Northern Ireland are getting their GCSE results today. Well, the pass rate is largely unchanged from last year. 69% of entries awarded a Grade A star to C. And for many, the next step will be A-levels. But the government is funding a new breed of vocational courses as an alternative. It wants to create three million new apprenticeships in England by 2020. Part of the reason is to fill the skills shortages in British industry. There are now 60 areas or sectors of employment which are facing a skills shortage and the problem is worsening. The gaming industry is facing a severe recruitment shortage and has had to look overseas for staff. But teenagers on a new course just for gaming, visual effects and animation, believe that they'll be working in the industry in five years. Our reporter, Jim Reed, has met some students at a college in Sunderland. You get to create a universe. You get to create something with your own set of physics, uh, design everything from scratch. It's basically anything you think of you can create. I've got my mind set on doing this career. It's sort of one of those courses where you have to really want to do it. You really want to be in the industry. How competitive is it to get a job? Quite, <laughs> quite, quite competitive. All my family grew up raising me on video games. All my uncles play, my dad plays. We're getting my cousin into it. So it's like just something I grew up with. So it feels like if I didn't do it, it wouldn't be right. <laughs> Where would you see yourself in five, ten years? Hopefully working as a concept artist for a game, designing out like all the characters and the settings and that. So it's not, it's not right to think this is a guy's thing anymore? No, definitely not. There's like way more girls, most girls like would sit and play games that are like classed for men. It's like creating something, you've got to present something to someone but you've got to have the story and you've got to have the characters to bind it up together to sell your perfect game. And if you can do that, you can go on to do anything really. What about doing something like this for two years instead of doing A-levels? Is that a bit of a gamble? Um, it is a bit of a gamble. Like. When, when I left school, or beforehand, I, I, I had a judgement either whether to come here or go to sixth form. And um, sixth form was good, it was just, it didn't have, it didn't spark my interest. So once I was online, I came on here, I seen the course and I was like, I have to do it. It's, it's game and it's what I've always wanted to do since I was six. Let's talk more about this. Kevin Green is from the Recruitment and Employment Confederation, which is the largest trade body within the industry. Mark Washbrook. Mark Washbrook is there. He um, founded Rockstar Games in London, which has worked on games like Grand Theft Auto and Max Payne. He has 25 years of experience in the games industry. With me in the studio is Jenny Taylor, recruiting and managing graduates and apprentices for IBM in the UK. And Dr Ian Pearson is a futurologist and has been looking ahead to the industries and jobs that people will be employed in in the next 10 years. He's had his crystal ball out. I'm sure it's a lot more technical than that, Doctor. Um, Kevin, let's begin with you. We're seeing this impetus, this encouragement to encourage children to, students to not but necessarily pursue A-levels. How useful is this? Well, I think it's quite important. Um, employers are struggling to find people with the right skills. Uh, we've got 730,000 vacancies in the UK. Clearly we need people to go to university and get degrees, but we're also looking at vocational qualifications which are tailored to the requirements of business. And businesses are struggling to find people, so we think it's a really good initiative. We think, you know, providing apprenticeships as well as degrees is the way forward. OK, well let's ask Dr Ian Pearson, um, which industries um, are going to be the ones, I suppose, most lucrative or most fulfilling for students now if they plan um, a vocational course rather than A-levels? Well, you know, some of the uh, jobs which will exist over the next 10 years are things like the games industry and the creativity industries, design industry, those sorts of things. In the longer term, though, an awful lot of jobs can be done by artificial intelligence and robotics. And what we'll see in the longer term is that human skills will start to dominate. And that really suggests to me that the most important skill that young people can acquire is the ability to be adaptable and to change to the continuously changing needs that technology will cause over the next 10, 15, 20 years. So they might have a very strong uh, career for the first five or 10 years, you know, making computer games or something. And then, uh, you know, after that, most of that might be done by artificial intelligence. So they're going to have to move into a different field. Jenny, what evidence have you seen then of people picking up on what in saying here, doing more technology driven um, courses and qualifications? Well, we started our apprenticeship programme five years ago, which was a new way of 
bringing young people into our business, um, particularly because of the shortage of skills in the technology sector. And uh, it's been extremely successful. And we're, we're not the only company offering apprenticeships. You know, most big companies do that. Um, and not just technology companies, so look around you, retail, banking, they all want digital skills. So mobile, social technologies, uh, analytics. How many apprenticeships do you offer? Um, we've put around 250 apprentices through our program so far. And, and when it comes to demand, are they always filled or do you have more than um, one I think I think we see uh, there's still uh, people tend to choose university first. There's still the trend that uh, you go to, you know, everyone goes to university and gets a degree and we'd like to see uh, more people choosing apprenticeships. It's a great way to kickstart your career at an early stage, no debt. Um, so, and, and it's experience in the workplace that actually counts. Certainly tempting. I, I can see you nodding, yeah. agreeing with what Jenny says, but there, there's also a risk, isn't there? Almost perhaps some people feel comfortable as having a banker with a degree behind them. Yeah, I think they do, but I think, you know, what apprenticeships are doing is giving you a vocational qualification. And in what employers are looking for is two things. Yeah, they're looking, are you bright? Have you passed the exams? But also, have you got the people skills? Can you work as part of a team? Have you got those uh, interpersonal skills? And actually, vocational Vocational qualifications most probably are better at providing those and giving empl employers a view about someone's ability to work in today's, wor uh, uh, today's uh, workplaces. So uh, we think apprenticeships are, are really, really important and I don't think there's any stigma now. I think people used to say actually getting a degree is a real banker, whereas I think now employers are being much more open, much more creative about where they find talent and how they hire young people. Let's talk to Mark then. What kind of people do you want to see coming through the doors? Um, people who are passionate, who love to make games, who not only play games but are interested in understanding how they fit together and being involved in building games. Um, we get a lot of people that come from degrees that have a good vision for what it is they want to do, they build up that experience. When they come into the studios they have to learn how to work as part of a team and how all the different elements go into making a game. It's not just programming, you've got visual effects artists, you've got sound engineers, sound effects artists, musicians, animators, um, artists, games designers. There's a great big uh, wealth of skills that go into making a team to make a game. But Mark, lots of people game, don't they? And enjoy it, obviously, and spend a lot of time doing it. How do you weed out those who think, OK, well, I game, I'm great at it, I, I could do this, what better job could I have than, you know, playing on a computer all day, to those who are actually going to develop the industry? Um, it's finding the people that not only play the game but understand how the game fits together, why a game is, is great and fun to play and why another game isn't. Um, understanding those subtle nuances um, and people who show an interest in making games nowadays there are free tools like Unity and Unreal that provide um, a tool set framework and engine to make a game that we never had at the beginning of the industry um, and tutorials and lots of information that provide you with walkthroughs as to how to make small games, how to build things yourself. Um, you have um, a lots of youngsters nowadays who are playing games like Minecraft who are learning to build worlds within, within Minecraft. It's not just playing the game, it's about being conversant with your digital skills, being able to use technology and showing that initiative, that drive that you want to make something. Ian, I wonder if people are listening thinking, well, I don't really need great qualifications. If I've got a skill such as gaming and, and, and I'm artistic, why do I need to bother at all? Are, they, are these industries going to be less demanding, perhaps, when it comes to qualifications? I think the qualifications are really useful to give you the skills that you need in the first you know, five years of your career. But as we've heard from the other speakers, the, the human skills that you develop are actually very important. You, you can't make a good computer game just by being a good programmer. You have to understand what it is that makes the, good, the game and makes it enjoyable and challenging and so on. Those are human understanding skills. Now, the, the funny thing about school is you tend to pick up the human skills on the playground in between the classes. 
you, you, t you pick up the technical skills and the knowledge skills in the classroom. So the, the, the ones that get you through the first part of your career are the things you learn in the classroom. And then very quickly you're moving into the area where the human skills will dominate, the emotional skills, design skills, knowing what uh, other people will enjoy doing. Those skills are the ones that will give you the longevity in your career. So it's very important for uh, kids to learn uh, motivational and leadership skills and challenging skills and creativity skills. But you know, the first few years you need to create, you need those a little bit, but you, mostly you need the technical skills of how to do the, the job because you know, some people have to actually do that and make it work. So you know, after a few years you become a team leader, but for the first few years you're actually just writing the code and doing the, uh, the, the very basic design under the guidance of someone that's got more experience. So you've got to get through the first few years of your career before you can get onto the more important, more lucrative parts later on. So there is some graft involved, Kevin. Oh, absolutely. You know, getting qualifications are important. They give you the access to employment. You know, so getting young people to think about what do I want to be doing. For us, one of the big issues is about getting really good advice into schools and education. One of the things we're concerned is the mismatch between what people are studying and the jobs that are available. Um, and if you think about apprenticeships, it's not just in technology. There are lots of apprenticeships. You know, there's stuff in recruitment in our industry, but there are requirements in retail. There's, you know, we're shortage of drivers, chefs, hairdressers. So there are real skills deficiencies in the UK economy at the moment. And what we really need to do is to give young people great advice, really help them think about what the world of work's like now. But also, I think, taking on Ian's point, what's it going to be like in five or ten years? So what do I need to do at the beginning of my career? And then what do I need to develop mm. as I go along? Jenny, it's quite, uh, uh, will you tell me how difficult is it to kind of ascertain how much personality, um, aptitude you need as well as qualifications and an ability to do exams? I mean, I don't think it's that difficult because that's what we test at our assessment centres. We're much more interested in competencies, you know, that have just been mentioned such as uh, team building, um, problem solving, uh, written verbal communication, so that's, that's the sort of thing we look for, uh, not necessarily the academic qualification or the GCSE results or the A-level results. Um, and Mark, for Rockstar Games, what's the next big thing? If someone were to approach you and say, I'm your woman, I'm your man, what are, they, what are, what, what, what are you looking for? Um, looking for someone who's passionate, who wants to make, wants to be involved in making games. Um, it's not just about coming up with an idea. There are quite a lot of people in the industry that have lots of ideas for making games. It's about wanting to work with a team of people. Um, when you make a game, anything that you do is working with other members of the team. So it's understanding how the team fit together, how you work, um, and really being passionate and having that drive. It's, it's a creative industry, it's all about ideas. You learn how, through your education, through your training, how to use the tools, um, and then it's through vocational training and apprenticeships that you learn how you work as a team, how you work together. And one of the things that I love about this new course is it's uniting academia and industry in order to build a course that allows people to understand the great range of jobs and opportunities that are available in the games industry, um, how they work together from doing a concept and pitching it through to building your own game so that people are coming to you already with those skills and that knowledge to be able to plug into your team and work mm. with you. Mark, good to talk to you. Thanks very much for joining us. Mark Walsh Washbrook, thank you. Dr Ian Pearson, thank you. Um, Jenny Taylor and Kevin Green, thank you very much thank as you. well.